we have an example. What we have is a solenoid. We're going to set it up such that the solenoid has a magnetic field which is constant and to the right. This means the current in the top wires is into or out of the board, Jenkins. If we are out of the board on the top, we point our thumb in that direction, our current or our magnetic field is going to be going this way. And so that will be, I agree, to the right. So it's going to be out of the board on the top. And on the bottom, then, it should be into the board is the direction of the current in the solenoid. All right. So information about our solenoid. The turn density of our solenoid is 500 turns per meter. The current in the solenoid is 20.0 amps. And the radius of our solenoid is 10.0 centimeters. Inside our solenoid, we are going to place a square. A square loop um, in the solenoid. It's going to look like this. We're going to orient it like this. We're going to turn that square loop. Uh, via some mechanical means. I don't care what it is. We could have a crank that we're turning. We could have a conveyor that we put a cat on, and the conveyor is causing the cat to run in and turn the conveyor. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what is this? No, it's a generator. We are taking mechanical energy and we're converting it to electrical energy because we're going to cause current to flow in this square loop. Information about the square loop. The number of turns of the square loop is 150. That is not the turn density, that is the number of turns. The side, one side of the square loop is going to be 0 0.020 meters, and we're going to turn that square loop at 2 pi radians per second. And the question is, what is the EMF created on this loop? So we have information about the solenoid. We have information about the loop. Basically, the solenoid creates the magnetic field. The loop is turning in that magnetic field. And it is the change in the flux in that square loop, which is causing an EMF, an EMF on that loop. Where would you like to start, Miller? Anywhere. Give me something. Something to work with. Um, we got a free body diagram. Uh, unfortunately, free body diagrams, <laughs> there really aren't forces that we're going to talk about in this particular case. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> what else, Miller? Which is? The magnetic field starts to the right. Um, oh, you're talking about the uh, lenses law trying to figure out the direction? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to really wor worry too much about the direction right here. We'll do stuff where we worry about direction. It's not really a direction question at the moment. Gary, help him out. He's been working at it. I'll pass on. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to learn today, and we're taking a lot of time with the I don't knows. Give me anything, Gary. There's all sorts of information on the board. Give me something to work with. Um, so do you use like uh, delta B equals B L? This is a random equation from last time. Please tell me, what is this random equation from last time for? Floor is open. What's it for? Clearly, we have a lot we need to remember from last time. What is this equation for, Meg? Uh, potential difference. 
Has a specific term, yes. Potential difference? <laughs> Renza. This is called motional EMF. This is for, for example, plane wings flying through a magnetic field. Is that what we have here, class? No. No, so no, we're not going to use this equation for motional EMF. Gary. Uh, EMF equals negative N D of a <laughs> this equation is called what? Okay. Uh, no, Lenz's law has to do with the direction. That would be the negative in this equation. What is the name of this equation, Sarah Jane Jones? Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction, and she wasn't even here last time. <laughs> Faraday's law of induction. This has to do with the EMF that is induced when you have a change in the magnetic flux. So yes, we're going to use this equation. This n is going to be the n, the number of loops in the square. Great. Magnetic flux, we need to talk about that if we're going to talk about the derivative of an equation for magnetic flux. Tyler. Uh. I don't remember. A B cosine. Theta. B A cosine theta, the magnetic flux. Okay. When you look at this, this magnetic field, B, is caused by, Michael? This magnetic field is caused by what physical object? Solenoid. The solenoid. We have an equation for the magnetic field created by a stole solenoid. Stasel. Mu not, I'm sorry. N, what is N? The turn density or the turns per meter on the solenoid. So this is all information about the solenoid. We have the turns per meter, we have the current through the solenoid. Okay, we have then the magnetic field. If we're trying to figure out the EMF, uh, we have the magnetic field. We have the area. What is the equation for the area? John? D squared. Simply D squared. Okay. Cosine of theta. Now, this is something we did last time where we know we have angular velocity equals change in theta over change in time. This is equal to theta final minus theta initial divided by time final minus time initial. We let theta uh, initial equal to zero and time initial equal to zero. This means that angular velocity is equal to theta over time, or theta equals angular velocity times time, so that we can substitute in angular velocity times time for our theta. Therefore, the EMF is equal to, let's walk our way through it, the negative of the number of loops on our square loop times d, the derivative with respect to time of b. We're going to run out of space. I'm going to move it down here. Sorry. The EMF is equal to the negative n times the number of loops in the square, the derivative of b. Well, b is mu naught, the turn density of the solenoid times the current of the solenoid multiplied by the area, which is just d squared, times the cosine of, we have now half omega times t, because that is the angular velocity. Actually, technically the angular frequency in this particular case. OK, just for fun, let's bring some stuff out from underneath the derivative. Nick, tell me what we can take out. Take out u naught and i and d squared. So we have the derivative with respect to time of the cosine of omega t. What is the derivative of the cosine of omega t, Vlad, with respect to time? That's fine, just a second. The derivative with respect to time of the cosine of the quantity omega t. Uh, it's going to be uh, with respect to t, so yep. it's going to be omega negative sine. Great. So now we can simply simplify this a little bit and we can plug in numbers when we get an answer. Okay. 
we have the EMF then is equal to, we have a negative times a negative, so the negative goes away. We have the number of loops in our square, mu naught times the turn density of the solenoid times the current in the solenoid times d squared times the angular frequency times the sine of omega t. Please give me all the numbers. I can't really read them from here. Paparella. All right, well, uh, big N, number terms is like 150 terms. Good, mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Turn density? Uh, 500 turns per meter. Current in the solenoid? 20 amps. 20, the sine? is 0.020 meters. Good, the angular uh, frequency? 2 pi times the sine. Times the sine of 2 pi times the time. That's the square. Did I? On the uh, zero. Thank you. So this is equal to zero, or we'll do this. 4.73 millivolts times the sine of two pi times t. There is our EMF as a function of t. 